Hello and welcome to the Book Bunch. My name is Sam. It is so great to have you guys on the channel today. I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please like and subscribe and then you'll be notified when I upload more videos. So hopefully you can get the most out of being part of this community. So today we are going through some of the better Christian approved fantasy books that I have read. This list will expand over time and I will review it every now and again. But basically here is a list of some books that you might like to read that I think are pretty good um, fantasy books that yeah are pretty clean for the most part. So yeah, hope you enjoy this video. Sorry if I sound a bit weird today. I am a little bit sick. It's not COVID, it's just a cold, which is good. But yeah, I hope you enjoy this one. Let's get to it. So I'm going to start off with a bang with my favorite off this list, which is the Wing Feather Saga. This series is so phenomenal. I've recently put a review on the channel, so go check that one out if this interests you at all. Basically, it follows a boy and his siblings, and they are being hunted by these evil beings in this world, and they have to try and survive, one, and two, try and defeat this evil that is in their world because so many people are suffering and they know that they can help basically. It is an awesome series. I really do recommend it. It is far better than any other fantasy series I've ever read, especially one, this one specifically has a Christian moral. Not all of the ones on the list are specifically Christian, but this one is, and it is so, so good. It's better than Lord of the Rings, better than Narnia, so definitely go check it out. It's on my list, the rest isn't going to be in any kind of order because it's just too hard to decide. But the next book I am sharing with you is The Black Leviathan. This book is currently a standalone, though I'm hoping that the author releases more just because they are such a good writer and this book was awesome. This book is about pirates who live in this world where there's no like sea, like the wa there's no water in the sea. It is all clouds and stuff so it's like everything is floating essentially and the main story follows this guy who goes and joins a pirate crew to hunt dragons and it is a really good series well not series <laughs> standalone I should say but it's a really good book I loved this I couldn't put it down I love pirates I love dragons and this just did it perfectly. So if you like anything like that, this one is definitely for you. I highly recommend The Black Leviathan. And we have a fantasy sci-fi classic. This one is Dune, as you can see. I'm sure you've heard a lot about it. There's recently been a movie adaptation of this um, series, but I've only read the first one so far. Only because I don't know if I will continue reading the rest because it is a pretty full on series and it is a bit hard to read just because of the way that Frank Herbert writes. I don't know if it's quite my cup of tea, but it was still a really good book. If you like fantasy, I recommend reading it because it is a classic as well. It follows a boy who is part of a royal family and he is being hunted by another royal family and he ends up on this planet where everything is sand and there's these giant sandworms and he ends up having very early on his family under attack and he has to try and survive that and then it kind of follows his journey throughout this planet from there on so it is a good one if you do like kind of really heavy fantasy this is more of that kind of thing but yeah, it was good, just not my favourite. I'm also throwing in Shadow and Bone in this one. I have only read the first and second book, not the third in the trilogy, so I can't tell you if it is completely clean or not, 
but so far it has been really good. I love the romance in this. I'm not a huge romance fan, but I do like when it is sort of sprinkled in with my fantasy and sci-fi. But yeah, Shadow and Bone's really good. It has your classic good versus evil. And basically this girl is trying to find herself a little bit. She's discovered that she's got powers and it's like this whole big deal and she has to survive and train and use her powers for good. So yeah, really good book. I did really like this series. It is one of my favourites so far and I can't wait to read the third one. I'm going to throw another classic on the list here. Obviously, The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien is a winner. Pretty much anything by J.R.R. Tolkien is pretty good. It's all very clean fantasy, even though it is epic fantasy. So I thought I'd put it in the list. In case you didn't know already, it is worth your time and your read. Another one, which I don't have a physical copy of because I have packed that one away, is Narnia as well. That whole series by... C.S. Lewis is also really good, really clean. Do recommend it, especially if you like some of the classic old tales. So yeah, thought I'd pop that on the list. I am also going to recommend The Court of Miracles. This one isn't as clean as some of the others on the list, purely because its story is around kind of the dirt of society if that makes sense so it's thieves and assassins and all of that kind of thing and that is the focus of this story is one girl who is trying to save herself and other girls and everything from being mistreated by the um, prostitution gang in this story and it is good versus evil so I still wanted to put it on the list because Although it deals with heavy stuff and it is doesn't really talk about moral things, it still has that good versus evil position and it's still good, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. But yeah, basically it follows a young girl who is going to be sold off by her father to this evil group of people who run a prostitution gang. And so she runs away and joins the thievery guild instead to protect her and it's her journey with that um i did really like this i can't wait for the second one to come out but yeah this is not as clean as the other so i only recommend this one for adults night circus is also on the list i don't recommend anything else from erin morgenstern but i do recommend the night circus because this actually is clean this is one of my favourite books of all time. Apart from the Wing Feather Saga, this is a pretty close second. It would be my favourite standalone book of all time. It f is basically if Tim Burton had a magical circus is what I like to describe this one as. I have put a review of this one on the channel in the past, so go check that one out. But yeah, basically it follows these two individuals who have been pitted against each other in a magical competition that takes place in a circus that randomly shows up at random locations at night and by the morning it's gone and it will randomly pop up somewhere else. It's really good. I do like it, especially if you are a Tim Burton fan, I would definitely recommend it. But yeah, not a huge fan of the author but I do really like this book of hers. I also recommend Six Crimson Cranes. This book was so good. If you like foreign writings or anything like that, I, I do really recommend this one. It was so good and it really gave me a cool insight into um, Asian mythology and lore and that kind of thing. I really liked this book. I can't wait for the next one to come out. This follows a princess who is essentially banished from her kingdom by her stepmother and her brothers are turned into cranes and she has to try and get back to the kingdom, save her brothers from remaining cranes forever. 
and she has to find kind of her voice again I guess you'd say because she can't tell anyone who she is like she if she goes to try and say her name or anything like that she like can't there's like a spell on her um yeah it was really good I really really liked this I do recommend it if you yeah want something that's not just your standard story that is a little bit cultural I really like this one then we have A Wrinkle in Time. This one is another Christian classic. I was a bit weirded out by this one. I couldn't put it down, which is good. It means it's written well. This is more, I would say, um, fantastical than some of the others because it deals with, well, even more like sci-fi than some of the others. Although this is meant to be just fantasy hooks because I haven't included a lot of my favourite sci-fis on here. But this one is weird because it's kind of like a normal story, but then there's random, like, Bible verses and things in between it that are meant to, like, help the story and give it a, like, moral message and different things. I do like it. I do recommend it. But just be aware that it's a bit bizarre. That's the word I'll use. It's bizarre. Still good, but bizarre. Um, it also heavily talks about like physics and different theories on like space travel and time travel and all of those kind of higher level concepts. Um, so yeah, it's probably m one of the more random ones in this list, but a wrinkle in time. I'm also shoving the night people on this list, even though again, this one could be either fantasy or sci-fi this one is the night people it does um come as a trilogy I have only read the first one though but I thought I'd shove it on the list because it was really really good and I'm hoping that the rest of it is clean but I can update you if it's not because I'll probably do a review on this series at some point on its own basically this follows a girl who is one of the only surviving Darklanders on this planet and she is going through like this desert and everything and trying to stay alive and there's these people called the night people who kind of kidnap other people on the planet and so she's trying to um, fight that force as well so it's a really interesting concept I don't know if I've really read anything quite like it um, but yeah really good it was really really good I'm also going to add the Eden trilogy on this list although I would say this is almost strictly <laughs> science fiction but it's so good I thought I'd add it on here and if I do a sci-fi version of this video you'll see it on there as well because it's such a good one this is also one of my favourite series of all time. If I hadn't just read the Wing Feather Saga, this would have been the next best one on the list. This series is really hard to get a physical copy of, so you might have to just get the ebook versions. But yeah, this series follows this girl who is a survivor in a world where most people have been turned into zombies, but... They're not standard zombies, they are nanite controlled zombies. So the human in them is dead, but their body is being controlled by nanites. So they're not quite robots because the nanites took over the human body. It's not like they were built as a robot. But yeah, really good. And these nanite zombies try and take over other living people when they find them and hunt them down by touching their skin because the nanites can transfer that easily. And yeah, we're following her in a group of survivors as they try to survive in this world and hopefully find some kind of cure or even not if they can't find a cure, something that can help get rid of this threat so that they can rebuild humanity and yeah, survive. It is so good. I have never read a series like it. I haven't read any of her other stuff because she is mostly a smut writer which is bizarre but this is completely clean and it is so good and I love it very 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 much and to finish off this clean fantasy list I am going to talk about 
some key Brandon Sanderson that I have read that has been clean so far. So the first one is Skyward, this whole series from what I have read. I've read all of the main stories that he's released so far. I have not read the short stories yet, so I can't say 100% about the short stories. But the main series is 100% clean. It is so good. This, again, is kind of sci-fi fantasy mix. Um, so I thought I'd shove it in here. But basically, yes, I know I say basically way too much. It's like my word instead of being like like or actually or whatever. I say basically and I'm sorry. <laughs> it's probably really annoying and I try not to say it. But I know that I've probably said it a hundred times already in this video. So just apologizing. But back to this. So this follows a young girl who is trying to be a fighter pilot, that's the word I'm going to use, in a world where they are stuck on this planet but they're being attacked by aliens from above. They're not on Earth because they crash landed on this foreign planet 80 years prior and they're trying to either stay on this planet and live a good life or escape the planet because they're under attack and go find Earth again. So she is training to be one of their fighter pilots. They call them something different here. I think it's Sky Fighters, but I could be wrong. I've forgotten. Star Fighters? Something like that. I've forgotten. Um, but yeah, she's trying to be one of them so that she can join the fight because her father was one when he was alive. But yeah, there's a whole drama going on and tension and different things it is a really good series I really recommend it again it's in my top three I love this series so so much then we have the Rhythmatist this one I recently did a review on it is one of the younger audience books in this list it is a story that follows a young guy who is in school and he is well school it's partly school and partly a magical college where people learn the rhythm like how to be a rhythmatist which is someone who can use chalk to draw these magical creatures and things or things that come alive using a mix of mathematics and this kind of magic force um but we follow a guy who really wants to be a rhythmatist but he can't he doesn't have the magical ability so he devotes his life to this fascination, his very young life, he's like 15 or something. Um, so he, yeah, he follows his passion because he's like, well, even if I can't be a rhythmatist, I can maybe be a scholar on how this whole thing works. And so that's what he's kind of trained to be. And he ends up getting paired up with this girl who is a rhythmatist but isn't super keen on it, doesn't really like it, and so they kind of have to help each other because their school and the pupils are under attack. So yeah, really interesting concept, really liked it, and it was clean. There is meant to be a second one coming out very soon, so hopefully that one is good as well. But yeah, The Rhythmatist. Then we have Mistborn, which is an exceptional series. I am only putting the original first era books on this list the second era is not clean so just be aware of that it took me by surprise and I was a bit shocked and a bit disappointed because up until then every Brandon Sanderson book I'd ever read had been completely clean and I've read over nine of his books now and yes when I got to the second era I found out that one of the books is not clean so just be aware of that you it's only kind of in passing like it's a couple of sentences so you probably could get away with it if you want to but it depends on how sensitive you are to various issues yes so Mistborn original era is awesome I love this series I have done a review on this one on the channel as well this is about a girl named Vin and she is a Mistborn, which is someone who has all of the magical abilities in this world. 
and in this world to get a magical ability if you have one you have to eat different kinds of metals or swallow different kinds of metals and then your body will burn them and give you a magical power depending on what metal you've burned and if you have that magical ability so most people can only burn like that have a magical ability can only burn one type of metal so they have one type of power but then there's these unique people called Mistborns who have all of the different powers and can burn all of the different metals. It's very cool. It kind of is almost physics-y in a way because there's like one will be pushing, one will be pulling. Like it's kind of the opposite reactions kind of take on it, which is really cool. I really liked it. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble now. Yeah, so it follows Vin while she is trying to save the world from this evil emperor that has kind of gotten way too much power and is abusing it and people are just having a crap life and being really mistreated and no one seems to care. So she joins up with this gang, well, this kind of thieving crew <laughs> almost type thing um, to try and take down the final emperor and it is really good I really recommend this trilogy but it's really sad it'll play with your heartstrings you will cry it ends very tragically so just be aware of that as well the final book on this list and also the final Brandon Sanderson that I'm going to share with you today is Warbreaker I recently read this but I have not yet done a standalone review on this one this was so good though I haven't read anything quite like this one and somehow Brandon Sanderson just keeps coming up with different magic systems that are all very, very unique. And I just don't understand how he does it, but he does. So this one in this world, the magic system is around color and also mixed in with like the souls of people. It's weird. So each person has this one soul, essentially, which you can live without. But it makes you into something called a drab. Where basically most of the colour is seeped out of your life. You become relatively colourless. And you lose some of your senses. So you're not as alert about like noticing when people are watching you and different things like that. But basically. I said it again. Sorry. So yeah in this world there are people who can have more than one of these breaths is what they're called these souls are called breaths and the more breaths you have the more abilities you can reach and you can use these breaths in different ways so you can give them into objects and make these objects alive and do things for you and then retrieve the breaths again or you can just keep your breaths and accumulating them and they'll give you different power levels it's really interesting concept like I said and this story follows two sisters of a royal family who one is meant to go marry this evil king and called the god king and the other one is like meant to just stay at home and deal with their life at home and everything gets mixed up and it's a bit crazy <laughs> and the yeah the sisters go on this adventure basically and it's not what you think it'll be the people aren't who you think they're going to be and it's all just a bit wild but it's good it's really good I really like this series um I don't know what else I can say about it without getting too spoilery but definitely recommend it I love the concepts in this but yeah again it's all fantastical so just be aware of that as well. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. I know there's probably more Christian approved fantasy books out there. I haven't got to them yet though. But as I do, I will release more of these videos and give you a more extensive list as of to what I think is good for Christians to read that is clean and fits our various moral guidelines. So yeah, that's my, my take. Go out, get these books, read them. They're so good. Let me know if you've read any of these, if you liked any of these, if you're going to pick up any of these. I really just want to know your thoughts and your comments. So leave me some comments below and I'll get back to you. Again, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe 
and have an awesome week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Mm -hmm.